Don't fuck up. Don't fuck yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rude Cooking School podcast. I'm your host, John Alza the Third, and with me is um, Giger lover, George O'Keefe lover, um, lover of both of them together, art lover in general. My name's Evan the Mayor. I, I went and saw the Alien movie, and there's a very vaginal part, and I said it's like Giger met Georgia O'Keefe, so I like both of them, and I made uh, a mashup um, Photoshop for my own podcast, and you're, that is my virtual background. Yes, it is very graphic. Imagine. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> there is literally a skull clitters at the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, snaky skull clitter i didn't even notice that until i did the copy paste of the georgia o'keefe thing over the late lady face and i was like yeah. oh look at that there's a little clit at the top <laughs> because, because it's a vagina like <laughs> no it's a fo- it's about? a flower john yeah, no i'm talking about the giger thing like the everything giger's vaginas and dicks no this particular artwork is is a very i know that piece it's, yeah it's I very famous it, yeah. it's just a lady's face it's not like a, a vagina but it, it kind of is a vagina. Nah. Like, no okay wrong it's a lady with her legs spread up no it's like a rorschach test you see what you want no it is literally i will i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little i know what screen. it looks like <laughs> i'll post it in the chat sure I know what the original looked like, but yes, there is a there. Yeah, it was good. Good clip placement. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about food. Um, fun fact about uh, H.R. Giger, big foodie. Oh, OK, I have no idea. He might. Be. Uh, oh, you lied to me. Actually, no, that dude probably just drank water and fucking like ate bugs. He was a truly interesting guy. <laughs> Yeah, his kids have a lot to say about him. He's a, like a really strange dude. There, see, it's just a lady's face. I don't see anything. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I know. I know what it looks like, dude. She has a clitoris on the top of her head. No, she doesn't. Yes, she does. She doesn't. You do. Your your mom does. Anyway. <laughs> what? <laughs> you heard me. Um uh anyway, the what have you been cooking this week because you have some stuff to talk about yes i have uh learned to enjoy making pasta with the KitchenAid device oh hell yeah yeah i sent you a photo of uh some spaghetti that i made and i was hanging it on a dowel to dry out uh yeah later on in the week i made spinach fettuccine um don't ever believe these recipes that you read online where it's like two cups of flour, one cup of pureed spinach, because you're just going to get liquid soup uh, in a bowl. You just you're going to have to add so much more flour than you initially think. And are you trying to make a uh, spinach uh, pasta? I did. Like green pasta? I did. Oh, OK. I made a huge amount of it because the recipe was way off. So I had to use like. Five cups of flour, and I, I now where were I have you? A giant, where were you getting your recipe from? Just the internet. Well, that's your problem. Well, I guess that is my problem, but I don't know where else to start. So that's where I did, and I've got a little notebook where I'm. It's my laboratory book. Uh, I finally, finally got like a decent baseline for a pizza dough going. Uh, I'm I'm trying to get it a little a little bit thicker because it is kind of thin and crispy right now. Uh, but I'm trying to like get it perfectly crafted for my particular oven and pizza stone, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, are are you, well, are you looking for pasta dishes or pizza dough dishes? Like recipes? Well, both. Okay. All of the, all the above. I mean, a generic pasta is easy as fuck. Like our spaghetti, it's just like flour and three eggs and then pinch of salt. And that's it. You roll it out. Look up. For for pizza dough, look up Jim Leahy. Okay. He has a no need pizza dough that's great. That's but he also has a two hour like quick and you know, you just make a grandma pie with it. It's fucking awesome. I have read that the, the food processor is like the way to go to get a good fluffy ball. Are you are you willing to wait for it to 
you know, go overnight. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I plan Well, ahead. then do the no need thing because the whole pasta ball thing is horse. I mean, the whole, you know, needing it with a uh, processor's garbage. Like, you literally, all you have to do for overnight, like a no need thing is literally just get it together, basically. And then, like, I just put the stuff in a bucket, stir it together with a, like a chopstick, and then let it go overnight. And then it just takes care of itself okay and it'll be the best pizza dough you've ever had it's it but the portions need to be correct and your hydration needs to be good right so like look up jim Leahy and uh no need pizza dough and you'll you'll be great okay and then for pasta um there's a i'm sure you've probably seen it here and there uh there's a magazine called la Cu- uh la cucina italiana i'm sure if you go on their website they've probably got eight zillion pasta recipes you know or look up you know um i mean mario batali probably has a zillion uh i know he nobody likes to talk about him but he's probably got you know whatever um uh jamie oliver probably has a lot because he his background is italian food and uh i've never seen a uh recipe by that guy that's not tested and really well uh easy to make so cool yeah I, I also made a vietnamese noodle bowl i made pho and today i made uh lettuce cups with nice you know chicken vegetable thai stuff seasoning uh it's been a very thai week i've got so much thai basil outside like it just took over it's so good yeah they don't have any of that at the grocery store i had to use my home grown regular ass basil for the pho. Oh, okay but it was that's why this it was really good. Yeah, that's why this year I bought Thai basil because I'm tired of going to H Mart when I just want yeah, Thai basil. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like everything else is pretty easily you know accessible, and then Thai basil is like, ugh, I got to drive twenty miles. Fuck. But now our fridge is full of like lemongrass and all these other ingredients that nice. there's not much else you can do with it that I know of. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and we, we are going to go out to H Mart at some point. I'm going to get a big fat bag of like rice flour and tapioca flour to make rice noodles um, mm. and do it fresh. If, if you got like a bunch of lemongrass and shit like that, look into making like uh, your own green curry, like Thai green curry. Okay. Because you just take, you just put that shit in a blender and just blend the fuck out of it. You know, do I have to really use good. coconut milk though? No why okay do you hate coconut are you coconut milked out i'm not a fan of it really that much oh i'm obsessed with coconut milk lately like i've been putting that shit in everything i don't like coconut water but coconut milk's really good um i i've been working like a madman so i haven't really been uh cooking too much interesting stuff i made uh corn pepper soup my my traditional corn pepper soup uh per request uh this week um and that was really really good uh if you like if you just look up my name in corn pepper soup it comes up on you know whatever that the people that own the baltimore sun (laughs) yeah it comes up like a million times uh i forgot to mention because we are in the middle of fake fall in baltimore Mm. Totally. This, whole, this whole week, it's been like gorgeous. It's like 70 degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made chili and put it in a sourdough bread bowl yesterday. I was like, fuck it. Get me a bread bowl, a Panera bread bowl. I'm loading that bitch up with chili. And gonna I was going to I was going to I was going to bring that up next for reasons. But back to the corn pepper soup. Uh, just you should make it. It's really easy. Like you don't have to be the best cook in the world and actually if you're a bad cook, it works for you because you burn everything. <laughs> you you purposely burn the corn on your stove, just on top of your burners. You burn the peppers, and then after they're burnt, you put them in a bag to let them sweat out, and then you pull the skins off easy. Like, it's, you know, charred, and it's delicious. Really easy. It's just a little bit of work burning everything. Um, And then it's, you know, just like milk and stock and uh some some uh you know like oregano and stuff like that bay leaf and you just cook it add the corn then you're done 
but then at the end you just fill it full of chips and cheese and it's fucking delicious so good nice like it's it's one of the best like i ate a soup probably like 20 years ago and it was like one of those things where i was like i have to figure out how to make this because they're never going to give me the recipe and then they gave me the recipe kind of the guy came in he's like okay well there's corn in it there's pepper you know i'm like yeah no shit but like he kind of gave me gave it away with he was like well we got like a coriander and cumin uh mix that we put in there and i'm like okay well there's the thing but then the 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 trick was basically you strip all you you burn your corn you strip all the kernels off the corn cobs but then you take the corn cobs and chop them up and then you make a stock with the corn cobs while you're prepping all the other shit so you're like starting with like corny water you know what i'm saying then you add your stock base or your stock to it and yeah it's great soup i highly recommend it um my son, who has been making dinners on Thursdays last week, uh, made me French onion soup. Okay. Because because we had French onion soup in the freezer, and we all had French onion soup on, like, Tuesday. And he was like, man, that was amazing. Can we make more? And I was like, oh, that's the end of it. And he's like, oh. I was like, I guess you can make more on Thursday. It's pretty easy to so make, he too. he did. What's that? I said it's pretty easy to make. Yeah. You know, you got to be vigilant with the onions. Yes. You know, it's basically like cooking onions for an hour and then just adding stock and shit to it. Mm-hmm. But he uh, he was really proud of himself and it was really great. Like he did a really good job. I was happy with him. Finally. I have found that if I want to like, I'm not, if I'm going to caramelize like, let's say, I don't know, in one onion. I put it in a little cast iron and then I put an earthen bowl to just to weigh it all down and let mm. it just sit there on low heat for forever and yeah. occasionally push it around. Yeah. Like, you know, when I make onion soup, I'll, I know that I'm like fucking making onion soup. So like I get the big guy out and then like wind up chopping up like, I don't know, let's say like two to three white onions, two to three yellow onions, two to three sweet onions and then two to three red onions. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of but, fucking onions. But it's funny because it's, you know, by the time it's done caramelizing, it comes down so much, you know? Yeah. Because uh, what you're doing is you're just, you know, evaporating water and concentrating flavor. And then once that flavor's concentrated and the sugar's concentrated, then the sugar starts caramelizing. And it takes a while, but then, you know, like like I said... I'll make it and then have so much left over that you can freeze it. And it's real like French onion soups. One of those things that's just great to have left over. Cause all you got to do is just have stale baguette and a couple slices of mozzarella cheese or just whatever kind of cheese you want to put on top to melt it. And then boom, you're done. Mm-hmm. You know, I like, I love it as a freezer go to cause it keeps really, really well. Cause it's just water and onions. It's not like anything's going to get butter and get frozen. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Butter. It's what's for dinner. The other thing I've kind of fallen in love with this week, and I forgot how much I really like, and it's been a while. Been a while. I've been really into PB and J's. Okay. <laughs> I had some I know it's super random, but the other night I was it was like I was waiting for fucking, you know, uh who was I waiting for? at the DNC to fucking come on at 11 o'clock or whatever the fuck it was. It was somebody. And, oh, it might have been Barack Obama. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is taking forever. Eh, Peanut butter jelly sounds pretty good. (laughs) So I made one and cut it in half and shared it with Crosby. And then we had another one last night waiting for Tim Walls. (laughs) We're like, well. Yeah, I'm just watching the highlights. I watched part of the first night and then – when they, as soon as they wheeled Jesse Jackson out, I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, because he's like hundred years old Jackson, and he's yeah. in a wheelchair and he looks terrible. And they just like they wheeled him out. He waved and they wheeled him off the stage. I've I've been really enjoying it, but two things: they have too many people speaking, yeah, and too many people are going over their times. Fucking Bill Clinton last night talked. He was supposed to talk for twelve minutes. He talked for almost thirty. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Get the fuck out of there. Although I will say I saw our governor last night speak. He was in and out like he was in his window and I was like, 
thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he did a great speech. Yeah, they're all yeah, riding pretty funny. high on the hopium. Uh, we are. Yeah, we, this is like good. 2007 all over again. Yeah, it really feels like it. Hey guys, you remember this hope stuff? Eh? Yeah, remember? Yeah, remember when we felt good about being ourselves? Yeah, but uh, besides that, like, uh, it's been interesting to introduce Crosby to like this is what political speeches should be. You know what I mean? Like for a couple people, other people, I'm like, this is not. This is a bad one. Like Amy Klobuchar, no, thank you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to cooking this weekend, but I am looking forward to on Saturday going to the Renaissance Festival. Oh my god. Opening day. Yeah, we're not going just, until October. I'm going in this month and I'm going in September and I'm going in October. Great. Because that's how we roll. You know where we're going for one my Hannah. Place in the world. Hannah, my wife's birthday. Medieval okay. times. Have you ever been? Yeah. Is it fun? It's fun. Is it worth the money? Uh, at least once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we keep threatening. Because, you like, know, we're of the we age there with that Crosby. Are probably our first real exposure to medieval times was the Cable Guy movie. The Cable Guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where he's doing all the Star Trek shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, when we finally did, I didn't go until like seven years after that movie took place. And I quoted the movie the entire time I was there. It is exactly nice. like in the movie. <laughs> you get like a turkey leg. You get mashed potatoes. You get a big old thing, a a, a, a goblet of Pepsi. And then you get assigned a, a team, a color, a color team, much like mm-hmm. the jousting at the Renaissance Fair. And there's falconry. There's there's sword fighting there. It's fun. It's just fun. Yeah. Cool. It's like dinner and a live show. So, yeah, I mean, it is that you know, you're not really going for the meal. You're going for this cheesy ass uh, uh, chivalrous, you know, battle. Yeah. But Crosby's basically like D&D personified. At the, like he's made out of 50 percent Dungeons and Dragons. He's a, he's a natural so, like, 20. He is a natural 20. Um, yeah, we've been playing Baldur's Gate a lot together at, at this house. Oh really? Yeah, the both of you. Yeah, we we got a co op campaign going. Oh nice. When did uh, like okay? We're gonna have to train wreck this uh, episode for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so Crosby's beat it. Uh-huh. He's he's almost about to beat it a second time. Is he going bad or good? He's gone good both times, but this time he's gone on the really hard setting. Oh, honor mode. Yeah, or tactician. Not the hardest, hardest, but the one tactician one down from that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but now he's kind of blowing through things because he knows that, like, well, I don't have to really search through all here. Yeah. I don't know what's here? And, uh, but he's t- he's going through with new character. He this time he didn't make a character. Oh. He he went with one of the he he's Carlac. Uh, oh. And so he could have more of the group. I see. Instead of just his yeah one the, the pre rolled characters. Right. How does that work? You pick Carlac as a starter character, and then like mm-hmm. what? I guess there's a story just, point where yeah. you find her, and then you got to go like fight some paladins yeah. and stuff. And there's a. It's just not there. It's not there. Like you don't talk they to the blacksmith. They know who she is. You don't fix her internal and in, in, infernal. No, internal. all that stuff is all that stuff still there. Oh. And you just don't find her on the side of the river. Interesting. That's yeah. fun because uh, she she has her own like voice dialogue stuff. Yeah, and that's another thing. We've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of the voice actors playing yes. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, which is a lot of. I fun. see a lot like of that. The guy who plays Asterion yes. is hilarious. Yeah, I just saw. Which the... I realized he's just doing Tim Curry. Kind of. Yeah, I just saw the t- fucking... the TikTok clip yeah. of him uh, playing D anD I I don't remember what he. I don't know. It was funny. Yeah, they're, re- and they're all the really lady good. voice actresses like hang out together. Apparently, yeah, it's a pretty small community, right? You know, like, but um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. That that it's probably my that's my favorite video game of all time now. Really, like it's so fun. There's so much shit to do. Like, I, you know, I've been taking my good old time. And I've taken a break from it because I was just playing it all the time, like I was Elden Ring at one point. But I, you know, Crosby plays it every day, and I'm just watching, like, 
Jesus Christ. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. And, you know, depending on the choices you make and stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of crazy food shit in it, too. Yeah. <laughs> there is. I mean, there's a lot of really weird food stuff that, like, you got to buy or keep or get rid of and too much drinking. and. Yeah, I like yeah. getting drunk and killing things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you like, uh, if you don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, and this is the thing I've been telling people for like a year now, if you don't know how to play Dungeons and Dragons, but you kind of want to, but you're worried you'll look like an asshole, which, I mean, come on, you're going to be playing with a bunch of fucking nerds anyway, um, get Baldur's Gate <laughs> and you will pretty much learn how to play it. Like, it's the most. It's it's the best way to learn kind of how it works, you know, just rolling and shit. Like it's a lot of fun. So there you go. Yay. Um, <laughs> who's your favorite character, by the way? Uh, gosh, I guess Carlac. Yeah, mine. Mine's Carlac, too. She's yeah. great. She's she's funny as shit. Yeah. Um, Trying to think of who, which bad guys I like the most. Uh. I don't like the devil guy's funny. I don't like Raphael that much. He's kind of obnoxious. Uh, he's obnoxious, but he's funny. And but oh, bad guys. Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> you can like make friends with some of the bad guys. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Last, last thing. There's okay. There's a part where you have to like go into this goblin village, and you've got to like. You can either kill all of the leaders to prevent, oh yeah 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 prevent yeah. an invasion or whatever this uh-huh. and that, the other. And there, I had an open quest where you have to like talk to this goblin that you saved from a cage earlier. Yes. And we go into the goblin hideout and accident. And she's there. She's there. And you're supposed to talk to her so that you can talk to this drow who is the, the person in charge of invading this grove. Right. With full of creatures and people. Uh, we, we got into a fight with the leaders of, of all of the, you know, the goblins and and I was like, wait, what happens if we just knock those people out? So we did that. We knocked out the one goblin that you're supposed to save, and then the drow person who's invading the grove killed everyone else, and then like came back. But bef- actually, before we left, we like took all of their all of their belongings, including their clothing. So the, <laughs> the drow is just lying <laughs> on the ground, knocked out, completely <laughs> naked. And then when you go back, <laughs> you can talk to her about like invading the grove. And she's just totally naked, standing there yeah. talking to you, like, "Yeah, we're gonna kill all those druids, right?" Jesus Christ, it fucking it's fucking game's so weird. Very funny. Yeah, and that's where you pick up a what's his name who turns into a bear. Yeah, and then you can have sex with that dude while he's a bear. Yep, he loves to fuck as a bear. Halson. Yeah, yeah. Halson. Yeah. By the way, guys, this game is fucking bananas. It's very, like, it's, there's a lot of very weird sex. There's a lot of sex. It's a fa- I, I was there's complaining on my podcast that it's it's fun to play with your friends. It's fun to play co-op. And, you know, Casey, our, one of our co-hosts, is like teaching his young kids how to play D&D. And I'm mm. like, it's kind of shame, shameful that there isn't like a family-friendly D&D video game that you can play with your kids. Oh, yeah. Well, not a D&D video game, no. But they do have children's D&D things that are like yeah it's like, called like i remember no there was a thing that i had for crosby when he because he he saw something and wanted to try it out this was years and years ago and it, it was like ah shit i have to find it like i don't remember what it was but it was really simple and it was like non-violent uh, yeah there's a thing you know what i'm saying there's a thing called mighty heroes i think that casey is doing with his kids um, but I, you know, I'm just talking specifically about video games. Right. There's just not, but this was, yeah, this was actually a D and D thing that D and D made for children mm. to play with their friends. That was nonviolent and non, you know, like, <laughs> but super duper easy, but you're still rolling a D 20. Yeah. Which is the fun. Part. I think it'd be fun to do a playthrough of Baldur's gate where you just do non lethal everything. <laughs> like you just knock, I'm sure somebody's done. You it. knock I'm everyone sure out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious yeah all right no more Baldur's gate talk sorry everybody yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah I need, we need to talk about it. it's it, seriously the game is so rich and it's fucking hundreds and, of hours of content it's insane how 
thick it is. It's insane. Um, oh, before we get into the food news, you have a gear to grind. Oh, well, it's also kind of food news. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the, the long awaited question mark sequel to Beetlejuice from 1988, directed by Tim Burton. Beetlejuice, Beauty, Beetlejuice is coming out uh, in like two weeks. And lately, Which I'm super excited for a lot of these movies. Uh, well, at least two of them from my knowledge <clears throat> do tie ins with like chain restaurants. So a themed menu arises. Wait a minute. What, what did you just say? A themed menu arises. No, who ties in with what now? The movie ties in with a chain restaurant. Oh, in, in the movie? No, in real life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ. No, no, no I'm sorry. I was just looking up the website. Uh-huh. So go ahead. Yeah. So the first the first one recently that I noticed was Sonic the Hedgehog teamed up with IHOP for some reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, and, sure. And a hallmark of these these menus is that they, they really aren't themed. trying. They just have pun names that are re- related to the, the IP. It's not actually like, for instance, Sonic the Hedgehog, the only thing that's even close to like a Sonic the Hedgehog type meal is Sonic's Blue Blur, Blue, eh, blue blur Special. And it's double blueberry pancakes, so they're they're, mm. they're very blue, and uh, they probably give you the runs, so that's going to make you, you know, into Sonic. And then the rest of it is just like tails, two by two, because he has two tails. Uh, it's two two eggs, two bacon, two pancakes. Okay, great. And then you've got Knuckles chicken sandwich. It's just a chicken sandwich. Dr. Eggman's <laughs> Benedict. <laughs> Amy's sweet strawberry bel- delight. It's a waffle with strawberries on it. And then Shadow the Hedgehog's Chaos Chocolate Pancakes. Okay. <laughs> They're just chocolate pancakes. Uh, and now Denny's is teaming up with Beetlejuice Beetlejuice to present the afterlife menu. And I don't know if this, you know, Denny's is like the late night drunk food place for a lot of people. I don't know. Is what, it though? I don't know. Is I, it anymore? I don't know. I don't know whether this is this is supposed to be geared toward that. We only went to Denny's when I was in college because you could still smoke there. Yeah, like, but the three, the first thing that 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 they have on their menu, you can find this at Denny's dot com slash Beetlejuice. It's Beetlejuice. so bad. It's very bad. the The first thing is called "Say It Three Times Slam." So you know, you yeah. say Beetlejuice three times in the mirror. Uh, it's three pancakes with chocolate. No, you think? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what? 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 That's Black Aggie in the mirror. It's you all- can just say Beetlejuice anytime you want. No. Oh, right. You don't have to say it in the mirror. That's correct. No. <laughs> anyway. Or, or, or the... Quiet. Go ahead. Sorry. Going through this menu. Sure. Three pancakes with some cream shit on it, chocolate chips, a chocolate drizzle, and then little green sprinkles, which I guess then makes it Beetlejuice. And then three eggs and three bacon. So that's your but, three times. So the theme, the theme is like... It's triple. Everything. It's got it's got black and white stripes. So it's Tim Burton, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, yes. I'm looking at this with you, and it's the pancakes look like Beetlejuice. Garbage. It's, it's terrible. So bad. The follow up, the second item on this menu is called the. By the way, hold on. What? That's also a lot of food. Three fucking eggs. Oh yeah. Three pancakes. A glop of <laughs> like that sauce doesn't even look good. It just looks like glop. It it does. And then weird bacon yes so good well it's probably like cgi bacon it's like clip art bacon yeah every yeah it's clip art bacon uh the next next up is the afterlife melt because it will send you to the afterlife if you eat it mm-hmm. uh it, it says the eternal favorite is back at uh, what eternal favorite i guess it so basically they're just slapping grilled a, cheese a, it's just a mozzarella stick grilled cheese sandwich well it's three cheeses yeah well it's mozzarella sticks Melted American and provolone cheese between two slices of artisan bread. <laughs> you know, because everyone loves provolone cheese grilled cheeses. Because pro- that 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 wonderfully flavorful provolone cheese. Here's the thing. Served with tomato sauce for dipping. Not soup. Sauce. Yeah. And everything comes with wavy cut fries, which look like garbage. Which is funny because in the picture, they kind of make the uh, the mozzarella sticks. The, the sandwich is cut in half, uh-huh. so you get a you know bifurcation, and they try to make the the mozzarella sticks look like teeth. Oh, yeah, I'm not quite seeing that. I think they're really trying to go. Are you for not? It. Are you looking at the same page of, I am? Of course I am. It looks like, like the garbage fries in the back. Yeah, it looks like to me that just that the the cheese is melting, gooing, gooing out. Uh, uh, God, it's it's probably you're clearly food. not a food stylist. Let's move on. No. Nah. And next up is the Beetle Juicy Burger. 
Which this thing is you. a fucking catastrophe. <laughs> Wait, first of all, it's on a bun. It's so. It's on a brioche <laughs> bun, so you know the bun is going to disintegrate immediately when you bite into it. Uh, it looks so fucking gross. The copy reads as such: "Invoke freakishly good flavor with three quarter pound patties, three strips of bacon, three slices of provolone, with diner Q sauce on the top." <laughs> which is probably just mayonnaise uh, with some paprika in it. Pickles, onions, tomatoes, and lettuce, all stacked high on a golden brioche, served served with wavy cut fries. That bun has no fucking chance Uh, in hell of staying together. No, no, (laughs) no. I would ask for like a second brioche bun and just be like, I'm going to make this into two burgers. (laughs) Okay, so what I'm seeing here, though, also like they're trying to make that burger look like a spider. Uh, but that's just me. The bacon coming I, out, you mean? I, no, no, the fries on the side. Uh, like, yeah, you, you definitely see things that aren't there. <laughs> well, I'm an artist, friend. I, I think this looks like shit. I know it. Lo- the burger looks like shit. Like it looks. It looks so like three cow pies bad. on top of what? It, it looks so disgusting. It looks terrible. I want to see what it actually look looks like in real life. Like I will go to Denny's and buy oh, this thing. It, the problem is that's the good picture. Yeah, that's dude. the best they could do. <laughs> yeah. Like it's going to look like a fucking pile of vomit. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's going to look so bad. So bad. Uh, and the final item on there this menu, go, yeah. I mean, it's a small menu, the cookies and scream shake. So it's, it's an Oreo shake with some green sprinkles. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, black and white Tim Burton, Uh huh. Mm-hmm. premium, like, but- <laughs> premium vanilla ice cream oreo cookie pieces topped with whipped cream more oreo cookie pieces and green sprinkles so remember enjoy this bio exorcist approved afterlife menu jesus christ in partnership with beetlejuice beetlejuice yeah like, you'll, you'll need an exorcist on the toilet yeah this is gonna give you the poops like oh my god huh, well this the cheese sandwich probably won't. somebody somebody should do the beetlejuice beetlejuice challenge and eat all four of these uh, menu items I'm sure some dickhead will like, I, I don't know which, what, I mean, the burger I think by far is the most disgusting, but that cheese sandwich is pretty close. I don't know. The cheese sandwich is the one thing that I'm like, I would eat that. Like, you know, it's just a cheese sandwich, you know, with, like, mo- with five mozzarella sticks on the inside of it. On I butter, never said grilled it had bread. flavor, but if I had to choose to dip it out in of tomato three, sauce. Yeah. I don't know. The burger probably. I, I would, ta- I would take apart. the breakfast one and split it with somebody. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. But that sauce, it's, it's I'd, I'd scrape the vanilla I'd, cream. Yeah, I would scrape the cream off of it. It's already. It's, Maybe like spoon some of the tainted. chocolate chips back onto it and some of the sprinkles. But oh, God. Yeah. Vanilla cream. No, thank you. Vanilla. Nah. By the way, the the idea of vanilla cream touching my eggs. is dis- <laughs> And I don't mind food touching. But vanilla cream on my eggs, you can go fuck yourself. And you also know the eggs are going to look as delightful as they look in this. Uh, oh, yeah. They always get eggs perfect. And perfectly. Eggs. All three fried eggs just perfectly known for fried. <laughs> I've been to Denny's enough to be like, you know what? I'll just take them scrambled, friend. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's. But the thing is, it's like you sent this to me and I was like, wow, that's like kind of like really low rent for Beetlejuice. Like, yeah, to I don't, be fair, Beetlejuice is one of my favorite movies in the world. I've watched it. It's probably my top three of most watched movies. Like, I love it so much. I love the character so much. I love the whole thing so much. But, like, I hold it in really high regard, and I think most people kind of do. So, like, to be like, Oh, we've partnered with Denny's. It's like, <laughs> oh, what? They don't think like, very much of their audience. Right. Like, dude, are, are we that are people that old? Because Denny, like, when's the last time you saw like yesterday when I saw this commercial was the first time I've seen a Denny's commercial on TV in like 15 years at least. Like, do you ever see Denny's commercials? I don't see many. I mean, the only commercials I see on live television is during like 
football games. <laughs> right. That, it's really the only time we watch live television. We saw this. We saw this waiting for Tim Walls to talk. Actually, oh. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, it was just one of those things that came on. I was like, oh my, like, because you had sent it to me. I looked over it and I was like, oh, that's fucking really weird. But then when I saw the commercial, I was like, oh god, this is way worse than I thought it was. Like, <laughs> it's also it's only just, four items. But they're not even trying. No. You know, like you would think that like, all right, we're going to get in partnership. Let's do this. Like, yeah, it's so lazy and it's so beat and it's just all right. Like, what what the fuck is like what I'm saying is Beetlejuice doesn't need Denny's. No. What's happening here? I don't know. what like, they're I In don't the know. movie, do they go to a Denny's? Like, like for the Denny's pay like a million dollars to offset some of the costs. Meanwhile, fucking McDonald's is over here, like releasing vintage cups and people oh, are no, scrambling no, 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 no. for them. Do not do not jump into my fucking food. OK, friend. well, I, I won't. I'm just saying that, like, if <laughs> if Beetlejuice teamed up with Burger King and had like Beetlejuice action figures, uh, their yeah. quarterly earnings would go up by a billion dollars. Did I, I'm not. Beetle just didn't have any Burger King or McDonald's stuff car- because it was such a weird movie. No, the, the, the cartoon. And it had an F-bomb in it. The cartoon might have, but I no, not the, the original film. But even the cartoon was like, I love the cartoon, but it was like, uh, I think it was just kind of past. Like, everybody was just like, all right, Beetlejuice, whatever. I thought it was a pretty popular cartoon for Saturday I thought Saturday. so too, but I don't know. I don't either. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's a really bad combo, and I, I it's just weird that like you take this weird legacy movie and add a really kind of garbagey, like low rent fucking restaurant to it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> come to Chi Chi's and get the, the yeah Beetle, yeah no shit Beetlejuice yeah, fajitas, for real. <laughs> right? Like Chi Chi's, yeah. <laughs> um. But no, like I could have, like I could see Burger King doing, like I don't see McDonald's doing, you know, Beetlejuice just because it's probably not like super family friendly. Like there's probably going to be an F bomb in there somewhere, right? I don't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the movie's PG. I haven't looked. I haven't watched any of the trailers. I, I, I would I'm think just it's like, PG thirteen. I'm going to go in blind on this one because I don't. I don't think it's going to be good. It's going to just be member berries for everyone, which is fine. Yeah. And that, you know, they can't get Jeffrey what's his face in the movie because he's a He's fucker. in jail and <laughs> yeah. And rightfully they kill that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, what the fuck was his name? It doesn't matter. He's a piece of shit pedophile. Um yeah, he's the worst part of that movie because now when you watch it, you're like, mm, that or fucking Ferris Bueller. Bueller. Cause he's so fucking good in the movie, and you're just like Oh, he was also really good in Deadwood and uh Oh, they I brought him that. back for like the tenth anniversary movie. With the movie was really s- stupid. Wow, oh. never watched it. Oh, I watched the first episode, and there was so many unbelievable cuss words in it for me. Yeah, that I was like, <laughs> I was like, this isn't like period appropriate bullshit. It's yeah, it's it was a choice. Uh, the whole there was show, too many cocksuckers for me, and I was like, you know, I'm good. Well, the whole show is sort of in Shakespearean dialogue, and also lots of cussing. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got to get out of here soon because I've got a hard deadline in 20 minutes. So let's get into some food news. Ooh, I like that. That was the, the current affair sound effect. Yeah. Um, all right. To what you were saying earlier, uh, McDonald's is having a like a historic Happy Meal thing. Um. But this is kind of an side story about it. But real quick, I'll go into the new collection of nostalgic keepsakes. So McDonald's is putting out like uh, basically plastic cups that have like Beanie Babies, Barbie and Hot Wheels, Hello Kitty and Peanuts, Shrek, Jurassic Park, Minions, Coca-Cola and McDonald's, like all on each one, two, three, four, five, six, six different plastic cups, which bullshit. They should be glass, but whatever. I'm sure that there's something that they're not allowed to have glass anymore. It's heavy and they, you know, 
the the cube is too big in the fucking containers when they make them glass or whatever. Who knows? Anyway, so they have an in-house arch- archivist who, like, this job seems like a lot of fun. And I never really thought about it. But, like, to have this job, because I'm sure there's, like, you know, there's jobs at McDonald's, but then there's jobs at McDonald's, right? Mm-hmm. And this guy has the mothership. Jobs. Right. So we all know who McDonald's is. They're huge, whatever. But given the brand. <laughs> no, John, please tell us who McDo- what McDonald's is. Well, in 1952, Ray <laughs> Kroc, <laughs> um, given the brand's rich history, someone has to keep it all straight, right? Because there's just so much history. And that's where this guy, Mike Bullington, uh, McDonald's official archivist, comes in with the debut of the new McDonald's collector's meal and it's nostalgia stoking cup giveaway. Bullington shared his thoughts about the happy meals of yore. quote McDonald's uh, involves me pretty much right from the beginning. Once the decision is made to go on a project, uh, Bullington told food and wine explaining that any big promotional rollout requires the context of past campaigns quote, the teams will come and investigate what properties they want to explore or use. We do deep dives. I pull all the materials. That's what archives were created for, right? I really enjoy that. End quote. Uh, so this guy has helmed the archives since 2005, though they were established in 1987 when the company was based in Oak Brook, Illinois, now housed at the Chicago headquarters. The archives compromise a very physical place within the building. This is fucking crazy. Five semi loads worth of records detail the history of the restaurant and its founders beyond the paperwork. Like I I'm imagine like this part of this fucking building is probably pretty fucking huge. And it's all kind of like, you know, library esque. I'm assuming <laughs> it's like that warehouse at the end of Raiders. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. Um, beyond the paperwork, the archive contains many random odds and ends like a phrenology report on Ray Kroc from 1905. Oh, wow. The original Hamburglar mask and all the giveaway glassware from across the decades featuring imagery of Ronald McDonald, Bertie, uh, Grimace, and others. What is, do you have any like really cool McDonald's shit? I do. Uh, I've got some of the, um, the uh, Garfield glasses from like the 80s. Mm. Um, the short guys? Yeah, they're like little yeah. little teacups, basically. Yeah. Um, they're all at my mom's house, but uh, I, I, um, I think I might have some Muppet stuff. Yeah. Also glasses. Uh, but as far as the toys are concerned, I only really have uh, one or two of those Happy Meal toys where it was a Transformer. Thank you. And it would be like a French fry container that would turn into a little dinosaur. The greatest, the greatest toys they ever put out. That was pretty good. The pancake box that turned in. Yeah, it was so fucking cool. Yeah. Um, I, I used to have some fry guys. I don't know where they went. Um, or sorry, McNugget buddies. I had some of those. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't have any of them. It's all at my mom's house. Like she, she's got fucking tons of, uh, cups. She's got these awesome plates that we ate on when we were kids. Sure. Plastic that like show Ronald McDonald at the beach and shit, like plastic plates. And like, those were our dinner plates when I was a kid. Um, and you know, when ultimately she passes, um, <laughs> I'm assuming I will inherit my, the fortunes. Yeah. My sister and I will probably fight over them, but like, she's got tons of glasses. The, those Garfield things you were talking about are there. Um, she's got a ton of that shit. I don't have any here. The only like restaurant, fast food restaurant thing I have are a couple star Wars glasses from Burger King from return of the Jedi. I forgot. I don't know how I forgot to mention this, but I also have a, it's Mac tonight bowling jacket. Nice. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, a I'll, bowling I'll to, jacket. I will, yeah. I will have to show this thing to you because it's on the outside. It's black, uh, uh, like, uh, velvety material with bl- like, you know, tight collars. I know. I know what you're talking. I know what the jacket is. You're talking. And then about. on the back, it's got the moon man's head and it says yeah. it's Mac tonight in font. Sure. The inside, the liner of the jacket is yellow with these like loud ass eighties 
graphic heads that are like ah extreme oh my you know, god like, cowabunga all right so this is what you got to do tomorrow yeah put the jacket on just wear that t-shirt you're wearing white t-shirt uh-huh some blue jeans uh-huh get in front of a, a red like a red brick uh background have hannah take some pictures of you uh-huh where like you know you're looking at me but you're like backwards like yeah with my head looking over yeah 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 like like with your hands on your hips and shit uh-huh. and then like one side you know you got your thing open the other side you got the thing open i do I want ha- some sexy pics i kind of do have a photo of myself doing that at the creative alliance <laughs> a number of years ago i think it was one of those times that i won like a local award from the baltimore sun and i wore my it's mac tonight jacket nice to accept Classy. it yeah. i tried to sell it recently for like 200 300 dollars uh, cause that's kind of what it's going for on eBay. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to hang on to this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's Mac tonight. It's very rare. Uh, God it was so weird that that whole promotion was so fucking creepy. And weird. I liked it, but, uh, and then white for those who don't know, what we're talking about McDonald's had a thing for the big Mac. So there's a song by Frank Sinatra called Mac, it's the, Mac knife. the knife. <laughs> and they it's, had a guy it's Mac tonight. His name was Mac tonight. And he played piano, and he had a giant, creepy, weird, m- melted moon head. Crescent moon like head. A crescent moon, yeah. He would, with sunglasses, and he'd be like, it's Mac tonight! Yep. Like, it was super fucking Floating weird. away into the actual moon yes. on his piano. Yes. <laughs> the 80s were full of cocaine children. I'll, yeah, I'll have to f- post a photo of that yeah. jacket into your little Facebook group there. Okay, so... um. Let's go back to the story. So um, the the archive becomes particularly useful when the brand is working on something like a collector's meal, which gestures to the past campaigns in order to remind customers of their childhood happy meals. And in the realm of happy meal toys, there have been some undeniable milestones. Quote, my favorite one is probably the fan's favorite one. The teeny beanie babies from 1997. Mm -hmm. Unquote. uh, Bullington said, quote, I wasn't employed by McDonald's then, but I remember taking my two daughters to try to collect those teeny beanie babies. It was just phenomenal, right? I just, I did score points for being that dad that did come home with one for each end quote. Um, so yeah, the explosive debut of the teeny baby beanie babies is commemorated in one of the new McDonald's collector cups. So that quote, fans can relive, end quote, the experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Woo! that was a great quote. Thanks, guys. Um, hopefully this time scoring the collectible won't be required to wait in line down the block because that shit happened at one point. Yeah. I also oh, um, I also have a, a Pokemon from one of their Happy Meals. Oh, I got a couple. Like, that was the last thing I actually bought probably like seven or eight years ago. Crosby was into Pokemon and I went to McDonald's for the first time and like, 20 years i think i got a blastoise i got a bunch of shit this was this was recently like five or six years ago yeah this is not from when we were kids (laughs) yeah um so they're like uh it's safe to say that bullington holds more mcdonald's knowledge than just about anyone which means his job also involves clarifying misconceptions about the brand (laughs) and when it comes to setting the record straight no character requires more debunking than grimace the purple fuzzy creature whose birthday was celebrated with a purple shake in 2023. Quote, there are different stories about what Grimace is, but Grimace is just Grimace, Bullington said. He's just Grimace. He's not a taste bud. He's not a drop of shake. <laughs> He's just, I've never even heard either one of those. That's super weird. A taste bud? A drop of shake? I thought, he, bud, I thought he was weird, supposed yeah. to be like a milkshake or something. I don't. I don't know. No, I just thought he was just like a weird monster. Just a blob. Like, in the beginning, he was he was a bad guy. He's a purple blob. But he started out as a bad guy. C- like, could you was, could you name all the f- all of the McDonald's characters right now? I mean, okay, McDonald, Ronald McDonald, uh-huh. Grimace, uh-huh. Hamburglar, uh-huh. uh, Mayor McCheese, uh-huh. uh, the Fry Guys, sure, Birdie, yes. Um, McNugget. Oh, are we going like that? Like the McNugget guys? Yeah, McNugget, the buddies, yeah. yeah okay. And then, uh, is that it? I think it might be. <laughs> yeah. I don't count the McNugget guys because they were just like a 
like a small thing that happened early in the 90s. I can't you know believe I mean? they like, never like invented new characters. That's kind of it. They should keep it. Do- well, well, then there's like wheels. No, and- that's that's BK. Oh, is that BK? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the I Burger King Kids that. Club. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I always remember wheels because I'm like, that's really fucked up. You call a kid in a wheelchair. A fucking wheelchair of wheels. I, actually, I think you're wrong. I think that kid's name is Kid Vid. No, he was called Wheels, wasn't it? Because he was the one that had the oh wait, no, the blonde kid had the the visor with the remote control that could do magic. That was yeah. Kid Vid. Yeah. He had like the Nintendo gauntlet thing on. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, wheels. Anyway, let's get back to this. Wheels was thing. just Drake, basically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So he says uh, he's just a lovable character who happens to be purple. Uh, Grimace is on one of the cups as well, so whatever. Um, I would love to talk to this guy. That would be so cool. Yeah, like, that'd be fun. That would be really interesting to pick that guy's brain. All right, so I got two more stories. Let's pick one. Okay. So there's a mayonnaise flavored fragrance <laughs> or the story of let's go with the, the Olympic athlete m- muffin story. Okay. Have you heard about this? I don't think so. All right. Um. So I, when I was in Seattle, when I was going to Seattle, um, I read about this and it's really interesting. Um. So, you know, Paris is like the baking fucking center of the world kind of for certain things. Um, but there was a mashup of Norway and Paris. So this kid, Henrik Christensen, who's a 20, well, he's not a kid. He's a 27 year old swimmer for team Norway was documenting his documenting his love for a chocolate muffin that was served at the Olympic village (laughs) with a series of TikToks, And they're great. Like the first one is kind of just like, Oh my God, this thing is amazing. And then it ultimately (laughs) progressed to like Dada movies. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know how to like make it any clearer. Um, So this is a, this is an old uh, story, but I'm going to read it verbatim. Six days ago, after some of his first meals at the Olympic Village in Paris, Christensen posted the Chucky Muffin ranked 11 out of 10 and was quote unquote insane compared to his 7 out of 10 rating of fettuccine with a pile of pesto and pork skewer and his 6 out of 10 chicken gyoza, which can't compare to the version he tried in Tokyo three years ago. Yeah, of course. Uh, this muffin ranks amongst his best bites ever. So he like he's like doing like a thing like here's the food that we eat like day by day kind of thing. Um, have you have you are you looking this up? Are you seeing no, what but I will. Looks like yet? Okay, please, because you're gonna flip your shit when you see it. Because I love the idea of like ranking all of the <laughs> the, yeah, no, the Olympic really smart. village foods. Yeah, it's very great. So by the next day, Friday, July 26, Christensen posted a video dedicated to the muffin, calling it the single greatest thing about the Olympic village so far. <laughs> he also posted a video. Showcasing- Never mind the, the sex with everyone. Well, that too. He's a good looking kid. He probably had a lot of sex. Um, showcasing the chocolate muffins, gooey center, the chocolate smeared on his face with the caption in Norwegian saying excited to see if this reaches an international audience with more than 166,000 likes and a segment on the today show. Like the kid blew up. Right. So within days, this kid Christensen became a full on muffin influencer <laughs> posting TikTok memes of himself enjoying the muffin around the Olympic village and officially declaring himself the Olympic muffin muffin man. <laughs> um, if other athletes can't get their hands on the coveted muffin, it may be because Christensen has drawers full of them in his room. <laughs> um, Turns out they're just o- Otis Spunkenmeyer. Yeah. Uh, so he's been po- like, so at this point, this was even before this was this this was posted right before I went to uh, Seattle. So I, I read this article and then I started going down the rabbit hole of his TikToks, and they're great. Um, the muffin itself looked so fucking good. <laughs> like I was like, oh my god, like this has to be a thing. And then of course. 
you know, everybody's trying like every, you know, food website and shit is trying to make this goddamn muffin. Okay. And let me find a good pick to show you what this fucking thing looks like. It makes me kind of want to make some chocolate chip muffins. But it's not even, dude, this thing is otherworldly. I don't give a shit. Oh, well. I want some for myself. Okay. They don't have to be otherworldly. They can be worldly. Well, don't you want otherworldly? Are you going to show me this muffin? Shut your face. Uh, Oh, here we go. The muffin is loading. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That is a chocolatey muffin. So there's like caramel. caramel, Yeah, there's like caramel bits on the top. Yeah. And there's chocolate in the center, but then there's chocolate chips all through it. So it's kind of like a lava cake almost. Um, Yeah. But apparently like the chocolate muffin part Uh is the best part. Okay. Which is unusual because normally people just like the shit that's in the muffin. And that container that it's in, chocolate leaf. Yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, so there it is. It looks like a hell of a muffin. It really does. And there's been people trying to recreate it just by pictures because they're like, well, I haven't gotten to Paris to try it. I'm like, well, then I don't trust you. <laughs> I'm I'm going to start looking up like Parisian food bloggers because I'm sure they do it. And then you can just do, you know, translate the page. Remember when there were like 80,000 cupcake stores? Yeah. Thanks, Sex in the City. Yeah. Like big old Magnolia because they got they got with Magnolia Bakery. Yeah. Motherfucking like eight pound cupcakes. Yeah. Oh. That was the Robicelli's fucking high horse right there, man. For like, a while, yeah. Right? Robicelli's yeah. bakery. Yeah. Were they doing uh muffins and cupcakes and shit? I think I think they were because it was the trend. They were like, We didn't really want to do it, but we did it and we did it crazy. I mean you kinda had to. And yeah. that was how they kind of made their bones like these zany ass cupcakes. Right. And then uh, they like started talking about opening up down in Baltimore and the local media was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're like fucking carpet baggers. Well, there it was. A, it was like a holy shit. These guys are coming down to Baltimore. Oh, right, 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 That's right, 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 right. That's going to be awesome. And, and then, then they never did. And no, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. Friend, friend of the show, Allison Robicelli. Matt Roach. Well, Matt was never on. I was on your podcast with matt yeah and allison We're, yes what did we do um potato salad. salad potato, potato salad. salad potato salad channel. i gotta i have to dig those episodes out of the archive because uh they belong to me <laughs> yeah. and uh i can do whatever i want with them <laughs> that was for your podcast though that wasn't for their podcast it was for their podcast no no well so no 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 you're our, right. our, when when we had the potato salad challenge that was for that your was podcast. my podcast right but yeah. i think we we also did an episode of their podcast about potato salad. I, I want oh, to say, okay. Because we did both of those episodes the same day. Okay. <laughs> and, and that kid, that kid Noah, that they had living at their house. Oh, right. right. He, he made one of the better potato salads. Uh, you made like a German potato salad. I think I remember that. No, I made a bananas one. Like, oh. it, it was really weird. Like, I had, I was like, I threw a bunch of MS because I knew they were going to do something like, they were going to like, I knew one of them was going to go traditional and I, what, I knew one of them was going to go weird. So I just kind of did what my, I kind of took my mother-in-law's potato salad, which has like, um, it's very creamy and it's very, uh, eggy, but I threw a bunch of MSG and shit into it oh. and, and Dijon mustard. It was really fucking good. Yeah. I, I have no I idea. Might've, I might've overdone the MSG, but it was really good. I don't know what those guys are up to they got divorced a while ago i haven't seen i have i saw allison at a screening of sam sess's music documentary about baltimore matt matt's matt's running a bakery allison's writing yeah that sounds about right yeah so they're doing good good for them (laughs) anyway um that's the food news for this week we will be back next week uh, I will be back. I will be back with Jenny to maybe wrap up our uh, summer of cookbooks. Um, are you going to do it with we'll raps? Do... Are you, are you gonna yes. Be, are you going to be rapping? My name is John. I'm here to say I love Fruity Pebbles in a major. Holy rap. shit. Yeah. That was I amazing. Spit them bars. Got little John over here. Yeah. 
I'm a big John son. <laughs> uh, but no, like no, we we've, we've been running through our favorite cookbooks, and um, I think we, I, I, Christ, at least one more episode, if not two. But uh, we'll see. So but, uh, I'll be back next week with that. Well, um, so <clears throat> getting all the way back to my use of the KitchenAid, I busted out the mm. David Chang cookbook. Mm. And I'm going to We make, talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make some alkaline noodles. And yeah. then I don't know how or when or where I would like to do much in the way that my friends and I get together once a year to do a homebrew day. I want to do like a ramen broth day <laughs> mm. where we just sit around with like a giant Cajun cooker and make like kettle of yeah. broth and um you know we talked about that before yeah i would like to do that yeah and divvy it up I and mean, everybody yeah. t- takes home like two gallons of broth yeah to put in the freezer yeah that's kind of yeah that's kind of how i do it like a couple times a year but we'll, we'll talk i think that would be fun i do so agree all right then i will see all of you next week thank you dear listener for listening to the rude cooking school podcast um Please, if you would like to, join our Facebook group and have fun in there. If not, uh, that's fine. Or uh, please rate and review us uh, on any platform that you are listening to us right now. Uh, It really helps. Weirdly enough, it still really helps if you just give us a like on iTunes because for some reason that dead platform still has a lot of sway in how people get, you know, that. Like, what would you say it is? Like, if someone likes you on iTunes, somehow it the aggregates for all the other things. Like, is that how it works? I guess. Uh, I mean, it, it's really weird. Like, it's I, still I think for podcasts, sway. iTunes is one of the top three. Like, I don't think Spotify yeah. is really the podcast platform, even though everybody's favorite guy, Joe Rogan's on it. Uh, Spotify is for music. I think Apple is for podcasts. Really? Still? I I mean... Because all the other... The, the apps that are dedicated to podcasts are, are all gone. Like Stitcher mm. and uh, Podbean oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, get a, we get a lot of... We get more... We get more... We, the Rue Cooking School podcast, mm. this is a little behind the veil, we get more uh, Spotify than anybody else. Oh. Yeah, it's weird. But then anybody else... Well then, no, no. The other the other ten things under the other platforms <laughs> underneath. You know, like I haven't. Yeah, I haven't in. even checked that. I, I probably should. Yeah, it's it's really weird, but uh, yeah. Anyway, rate and review us if you can. Just rate it, or just share it, and or just tell a friend, and that's really uh, helpful. Just to get somebody new listening is great, and then they'll tell their friend, and they'll tell their dog, and then they'll tell their mailman, and that's how it works. And you know, it spreads. Thank you very much. Uh, looking at you, um, who was it? Germany, Germany again. Thank you very much. Uh, really crazy numbers in the last couple months. Thank you very much. All six of them. More than you would think. It's really strange. Seven. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> D- Don Shane, all seven of you. Uh, with that said, thank you for listening to the Rude Cooking School podcast. My name is John Hauser the Third. Don't yuck my yum. And do look forward to the Bridges of Madison County theme menu at Chili's. Ooh, I like that. That's sexy. Clint Eastwood. Wasn't he in that movie? I guess. Yeah. Uh, anyway, gross. See you, everybody. Pride and Prejudice menu coming soon to Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> I don't think... Honestly... Like, I'm not going to stop the move. I'm not going to stop show right here for real. I think Outback is doing perfectly fine because the one in Canton here always packed. Sure. It's been open for fucking like 30 years now, but I think and that it, that building that they're in is going up for sale and they're going to have to leave. <laughs> I don't know how they've like stayed away. They can, they can go from into, all the price hikes. The Hooters closed down in the inner Harbor. They can go in there and like draw everyone to the inner Harbor. Outback titties. I like it. Outback titties. With their new theme menu, Philadelphia, starring Tom Hanks. Oh, God. Goodbye, everybody. Fuck this. I'm out now. Bye. Ah.